next week's Final Four on the line. Center on the campus of the University of the Pacific is the site of this NCAA East Regional Final that has top seed Pacific taking on number two seed Florida. Hi again everybody, I'm Steve Babick and welcome to Sunshine Network's coverage of Gator Volleyball. Now these two teams had easy go at it in the semifinal matches. Florida took care of BYU 3-zip, then Pacific took care of Northern Iowa three games to none. Now these two teams are evenly matched. If you're looking for an edge, it might be the home court advantage for the Tigers. And if anybody knows about that, it's my broadcast partner Heather Cox who played for the Tigers in the early 90s. And Heather, there is no place like home. Certainly not, Steve, but Spano Center in Stockton is a very special place to play and not only for UOP, but for Pacific's opponents as well. Stockton is a very faithful volleyball community. They respect good volleyball. So the good news is they'll cheer very loud for UOP plays, but they'll cheer just as loud for good Florida plays. What a great coaching matchup we have tonight. Mary Wise has put Florida volleyball on the college map in the 1990s. And for Pacific, John Dunning, two national titles. Yeah, it's no coincidence that these two programs are two of the best in the nation. They share a common denominator. Every year the players may change, but the one constant throughout is that these two coaches, they are the reason that these two programs are so good. Both Mary and John really know how to get the most out of their players. And I think the reason is because they get so much respect out of the players because they are just so knowledgeable about volleyball. And we had a chance to talk to Mary Wise and John Dunning before this match and ask them about their keys to the game. Well, I think offensively, Pacific is as good as they come and, and leading the way with Elsa Stegman, what she does. No one else has been able to stop her, averaging over five kills a game. And we're not sure we're going to stop her either. But what we can't have is Ham or Smith or Chambers and one of the others having a career match. So I think the key for us is to block balls. We don't expect that we're going to be able to stop Elsa, but we must block the others. I think if we can win the blocking battle, we can keep it close. Well, it seems like some of those kids for Florida have been there so long that we actually know them pretty well even before this year. But, you know, it's the same old game as it is against any good team. I mean, it's, uh, it's all about serving and passing and ball control. And then it's about handling the situation. Um, if you can control your nerves and stay focused on what you do, there are strategies in the game, but it's basically control the ball, handle the pressure, same old game. What makes great coaches? Of course, great players. And both teams have their All-American go-to players. Florida's Jenny Manns and for Pacific, Elsa Stegman. Right, and Jenny Manns for Florida with Jen Sanchez. They're the only two seniors in the nation to appear in every national semi every year of their career. Tonight, Manns hopes to make it four straight, and she is the definition of a true competitor. She goes one speed, and that's full speed. And she has such an advantage over everyone else on the court because she's played in more high-pressure, big games than anybody in the nation. Playing against her, it's a great matchup with Elsa Stegman at Pacific, who could be the most complete player in the nation, and in my mind is on the top of a very short list of candidates for National Player of the Year. Elsa let loose for an NCAA tournament and Pacific single match record 46 kills in the Tigers' second round win over Michigan, and Elsa plays with a do or die mentality. She will do absolutely anything for this team. She is just the type of player you want in a high pressure match. We know three of the four teams that are going to Hawaii for the Final Four. The fourth, Pacific Florida. We'll find out when we come back with our coverage of Gator Volleyball from Stockton, California, after this timeout on Sunshine. Who can help Stacy lead an independent life? Okay, I know I have a problem, but what will I do? Where will I go? Who can I turn to? If you want to change the world, you need to start today.
The University of Florida campus is a beautiful place, but the challenge for a major university in the 21st century is to move beyond these walls and meet people where they are. That means using technology to assist our students with registration, improve the classroom learning environment, and even deliver courses to their workplace, no matter where that is. It's part of our commitment to performance in the new millennium. SunshineNetwork.com is the source for golf. From the fairways to the greens, from the course to the clubhouse, log on to SunshineNetwork.com for all of the latest information on the links. And there you see the Florida Gators, and welcome back to the Alex Spano Center here in Stockton, California. I'm Steve Babick, along with Heather Cox, and welcome to Sunshine Network's coverage, NCAA style, of University of Florida Volleyball. The finals of the NCAA East Region. We know that Stanford will be in Hawaii, we know that Penn State will be in Hawaii, and we know that Long Beach State will be in Hawaii at the Final Four. Will it be John Dunning's Stockton team here in Pacific, or Mary Wise's Florida Gators? We shall see. Take a look now at the lineup here for Florida to begin with for Mary Wise. Jen Sanchez, the setter. Chris Bubba will start in the back row, defensive specialist. The outside hitter, Jeremy Hattendorf. In the middle, Nicole McRae, Jenny Whitehead. And the right side outside hitter is Jenny Manns. For John Denning's Pacific Tigers, Carol Gormson, the setter. Outside hitters, Jamie Hamm, Elsa Stegman, the All-American. The middle blockers, Tracy Chambers, Danielle Shin. And the right side hitter, Jenica Smith. And that is a very different Pacific lineup than Florida saw the first time that these two met at the State Farm NACWA Classic. We had a different setter, a different middle blocker, and a different outside hitter. Last time these teams played back on August 28th, Pacific won three games to two. Very evenly matched outing between those two teams and the Pacific won the first one. Florida serve. Pacific answers on the first play and they get signed out. And that is exactly what the Tigers want to do here is establish the middle early. The middles weren't as much of a factor last night as they need to be a night tonight. Same game for Florida. They want to go to the middle early. Sanchez to McRae on the back spot and Florida gets the sign out. It could be a long match of a lot of sign out battles. Well certainly both of these teams are so offensive that we will see a lot of side out. I think the key is who wins that transition game. McRae checks out. Serving now for Florida, Nikki Hartley. And the Tigers on the attack. Stegman on the kill. Counted. Elsa Stegman. Tremendous season. Two-time Big West Conference Player of the Year. She is so explosive. It's amazing to watch her and think that she's just 5'10", but I think she's the strongest player I've ever played with or against, and I think Florida would probably feel the same way. Florida runs the backslide with Heather Wright. And the junior from Martinsville, Indiana, with the play. Did not have a big match last night against BYU, but that was out of design. Expect to see big things out of Heather Wright today. Mary Wise said last night's offense was vanilla. That's what they called for to be successful against BYU. She said tonight you'll see a very spicy offense. And by spicy, she means a lot out of Wright and McRae, a very sophisticated offense. Danielle Shin sent the ball back over and caught an opening in the Florida defense, signed out to Pacific. Game one, all score. The jump served by Stegman, controlled by Florida. Back row attack by Mans. Play up in there. Was blocked out by Pacific. Side out again. This time Florida on the serve. Gerilyn Hatnorth will serve. Next set to Smith. And Smith with the kill. Jennifer Smith, 6'2", senior from Forestville, California. And that's exactly what Mary Wise talked about. She said, we must control and contain Jenica Smith. She says Elsa's going to get her 25 kills, but we have to stop Smith on the right side. And the service air by Danielle Shin sends it back over to Florida. And that's something that must be improved for Pacific, who had 13 service errors last night in the semifinal win over Northern Iowa with just two aces. Florida, on the other hand, served an amazing match. Nine aces. And just five errors. That's an excellent ratio. Quick hit by Pacific, covered by Florida. UOP now in the offensive attack. Sanchez sets high, outside Jen Whitehead. Missed down the line. Side out to Pacific. Pacific. Excuse me, that's a huge break for Pacific. 
perfect because they want to commit block on Whitehead, and Whitehead found herself all alone. The right side blocker got faked out for Pacific. A nice set by Sanchez. That Norse pass. Set again to Whitehead. Blocked at the net. Tracy Chambers with the block. Chambers will be focusing on Whitehead when she's in the front row. In fact, she will commit block with her, meaning she will go wherever Whitehead goes. You see her release a little bit early, leave the middle one-on-one -on -one with the left side blocker. The serve by Smith, controlled by Florida. The tip over. Whitehead with the tip. A little change of pace that time by Florida. Well, any hitter in the nation after two, serve, after two hitting errors is going to tip on that third ball. UOP needs to recognize that and sneak in defensively. Nice serve by Jen Sanchez. Ham with the cross-court kill that falls in in front of Gerald Hattendorf. Side out to Pacific. They have a 1-0 lead here in game one. And a service error on Jamie Ham. And Florida will have the side out. And already two quick ones. And that will frustrate John Dunning, who believes if you cannot serve effectively, you will not play. That's something that really determines who plays for him. Oh, man, they did not handle the pass very well, but the Tigers regrouped. The big kill by Smith. And right now, Florida defensively in the back, not getting good movement. Not at all, and they're not able to read it. I don't think that the block is putting up a solid block, so hard for the defense to dig those seams. Florida frustrated right now, a back row attack called by the up official on Jen Sanchez, who's a back row player, cannot attack the ball if it crosses the plane of that net. 2-0 lead now for Pacific. Hattenor to Sanchez, back to Hattenor. Block at the net, a double block there, Danielle Shen along with Kara Gormson. Right now, Florida being predictable. That is why Pacific has been successful with the block so far. And we heard Mary Wise say it. The blocking will be a key in this matchup. Hattenorf that time tools the block. It goes out, so side out to Florida. And Mary Wise will bring in Nikki Hartley. And Hartley will be the server. And this is a familiar substitution pattern that we'll see throughout the match. A little bit different substitutions in the NCAA tournament. Only 15 allowed, where in the SEC all season, Florida has been accustomed to 18. But so far, we haven't seen that really affect the Gators. They haven't played in games long enough to run out of subs. And John Dunning sends in defense specialist Angela Rosenquist in the back row. Pacific on the attack. High set Stegman thinks it over. Right with the sendback. That time, Stegman tools the block. New sign out to Pacific. They'll be serving 3-0. Think to block Elsa Stegman. There's no way to do it. She's unblockable, but what you need to do is move the block a little bit inside because she does like that sharp cross-court hit. The backslide to right did not work. She had to send it back over. Stegman on the attack. Blocked by Florida, but covered by Pacific. Stegman again. Count it. Elsa Stegman. Early on has the big arm swing, Pacific up 4-0. And a huge substitution by John Dunning, bringing in Angela Rosenquist, the DS, who covered the block and made it possible for Elsa to have that second attack. Florida runs a quick play, net violation against Pacific. And they'll call that on the uh, Tigers, so Florida will have sign out. Have yet to score here in game one, down 0-4 on the serve. Hands with the top spin serve, controlled by Pacific. Stegman, the big hit. Hartley could not come up with a dig. And early on here, Elsa Stegman, four kills. I told you in the open, she will do everything it takes to win a ball game for a team. She said, if I have to pick up a car and carry it on my back, I will do that. And that's just the mentality that Stegman has had all season long. 46 kills in the second round against Michigan. And she likes to do the jump serve. The toss. And the hit, controlled by Hattendorf. Back row attack, Jenny Manns, the tip. Jenny Manns read the defense well, and sign out to Florida. Great change up that time. The reason that was successful for Manns is she changed it up. She was deceptive at the very last minute. Manns has been, I think, one of the most successful back row attackers in the nation all year. And for Pacific, answering with her own little dink shot. Jamie Hamm. And Hamm is coming off of a career night last night. Had a career high three solo blocks. Also had her fifth double-double against Northern Iowa. Handoff's pass. Sanchez backslide to right. It was on, so Pacific 
has scored the first five points of game one. And Mary Wise will take a timeout. And try to fire up this team. We'll be back with more from Stockton, California. Pacific up 5-0. Back after these messages on Sunshine. My name's Anthony Sullivan, and you've probably got a broom like this at home. When you sweep, dirt and dust flies everywhere. If you want a clean sweep, then check out the One Sweep. The secret's the rubber bristles. When pressed down, they form a squeegee action. People love the One Sweep for wood floors. In one pass, it gets it all, and it doesn't scratch the floor. For tile, it's the best. It gets in the grout that traps the dirt. Use the One Sweep wet, and the brushing action scrubs so you don't have to. When you're done, just flip it over and squeegee the floor dry. But here's the best part, carpet. The One sweep goes deeper than even the most expensive vacuum cleaner. Cat hair, dog hair, your hair, my hair, the secret is short strokes. The one sweep creates static and that's why it works. The purple one sweep normally sells for $29.99 but order today and you'll receive it for just $19.99. But order in the next five minutes and you'll receive a second one sweep absolutely free. To order your set of two one sweeps for only $19.99 plus shipping, call 1-800-867-2112. Welcome back to the East Regional Final from Stockton, California, where in Game 1, Pacific has jumped out in front of Florida 5-0. I'm Steve Babbick, along with Heather Cox, and we saw Mary Wise in the huddle doing some adjusting right now. Right, I think what she's trying to do is mix it up against Elsa. You see the hitting percentage early. Pacific off to 73% hitting percentage. Florida at 214, not bad, but their defense has got to slow Pacific down so far. Pacific with zero hitting errors and 11 kills. Not a good pass by Hattendorf, but Florida recovers to run the attack. Jen Whitehead hit is dug by Pacific. And a little dump over. Florida covers. Sent back over. And John Sanchez with the dump over in the center from Texas with the play in Florida with the sign out. And how about the huge pancake by Jen Mans to keep that ball alive? Mans defensively as good as they get. We talk about her hitting, but uh, she plays defense in the back row as well. Play at the net. Violation and Florida on the scoreboard. And a great time out by Mary Wise. Playing with a little bit more confidence. Slowing things down a little bit. And right now talking to the top official. The captain of this team, Danielle Shin. Checking the Joan Powell. Joan Powell, the first referee. Tom Pingle is our second referee. Florida on the serve. Attacked by Pacific, covered by the Gators. Sanchez sent it back over. Here comes Smith. Nice dig by Mans. Set. Smith. Double hit called on Pacific. So Florida has point number two. And suddenly Florida's defense is picking up their transition game. is scoring points for them right now. Florida always a very good side out team. What it needs to be tonight is a great transition team. Thompson sets Ham, covered by Florida, set by Sanchez, back row attack, Mans counted, Jenny Mans from the back row. Mans all season long has been the primary offensive threat, she's gotten a lot of help from her teammates, Jenny Whitehead coming along has I think added that extra element that Florida was missing, but she is the go-to player. And the attack that time by Jenica Smith, the 6'2 senior for Pacific. Not controlled by Florida, so sign out to the Tigers. And Jenica Smith is really flourishing in her new position as a right side player. John Dunning moved her because he thought defensively it fit better into UOP's defensive scheme, having her dig right back and block at the right side position rather than that left side position, which I think is the toughest place on the court to block. Chris Boba's pass too hard, went back over to Pacific. The Tigers on the attack. Back row, touch. Mans touched the ball on the attack. Pacific. Already with her sixth kill. Amazing to think Pacific just with six points and six kills by Stedman. And Smith serves that one in the net. Service error on Pacific. And now serving for Florida V. Sanchez as John Dunning looks on. Trying to get his team back to a final four. It's been a while for the Tigers. It's been since 90. Went to Maryland, played in the national championship match, lost to UCLA. Mans is blocked. Boba runs it down, and Mann sends it back over, keeps it alive. The back 
slide with a nice push there. Tracy Chambers with the adjustment. Nice play. And Steve, that's all coaching. Both of these coaching staffs have these teams so well scouted. You can see that every player on the court knows the vulnerable spots in their opponent's defense. On the attack, Whitehead. Jen Whitehead had a good match against BYU last night. 19 kills. She hit 342. Good attack that time. What I like about Whitehead's game is she's so versatile at Michigan State. She played outside, she played right side, she played middle, so she can hit all tempo sets across the net for Mary White. Stegman on the pass. Florida will just have to send it back over. Stegman blocked. Build up front, Sanchez, back set, Mans the tip, covered by Pacific. Good rally going on. Stegman blocked at the net. Jump ball, McCray, Nicole McCray, wins the battle at the net. Nicole McCray, another one of the X factors, I think, for Florida. McCray and White Wright have to have a great match, and this time McCray has just given the gift of an overpass, and this freshman is certainly playing with a lot of maturity. Backslide play by Pacific, Florida covers, Mans. Not get a good swing on that one. And a break for Florida. Mans didn't get a good swing, but Pacific just did not get back there in time to cover. Florida, after being down 5-0, within one, serving 5-6. Elsa Stegman says, wait a minute, we'll get momentum back. Elsa wanting to seize the moment. You can read her left saying right here, right here, wants to pounce. This game's so much about momentum. The first game so vital. Florida had trouble with that serve, so Pacific with the attack. Stegman. Wow. Boba with the dig. Oh, how about that Boba dig? And then it completely nullified by the mishandle. That's a tough ball to take with your hands for Jenny Whitehead because that ball is obviously wet. Watch Chris Boba get underneath it. That is an amazing Amazing dig. Whitehead needs to bump set that knowing that it'll be wet. The tip by Mans, covered by Pacific. Free ball for Florida, Mans. Hattendorf on the hit. Pacific, good back row defense as well. Bob up front, Sanchez. Sets, Hattendorf. Too hard. That's a frustrating attack for Gerilyn Hattendorf, who was one-on-one. -on -one. We talked about the fact that Pacific is going to commit block. That means Gerilyn Hattendorf will be one-on-one -on -one quite a bit tonight. McCray on the back slide. Good cover on the back row by Pacific. Back row attack in the net that time by Tracy Chambers. And Florida will make a substitution. Nikki Hartley will come in back row. She will serve. Florida down by a score of 8-5. to five. Game one. Here from Stockton, California. Stegman. Blocked and blocked out. Side out, Pacific. And that's the difference we see this year with Elsa Stegman's play. Her freshman year, she could pound with the best of them. This year, she's got so many shots. You see her tooling the block. She knew that was going out of bounds. You see her tipping it in to give her team a free ball. You also see the hammer. Kara Bormson on the serve. Hatton off on the pass. Mans partially blocked, but the ball falls in, so send out to Florida. Florida hanging tough. It's been a tough go offensively. They've not been at their best, but they're down by three, 8-5. Nice serve by Mans. Stegman on the attack, though. Hit the antenna. It's out. It was a tough pass to set by Gormson. Stegman on the attack, and it did hit the antenna. Yeah, Stegman continuing to try to work it around. This time sees that she's got line, but she's only got about enough room for that ball to fit through. That's a tough play. And Jenny Mann's way long on that serve. So sign out to Pacific. An 8-6 lead in serving Elsa Stegman. The top spin followed by the top spin. Mans does it standing. Elsa does it with a jump. Standing a little bit more efficient. Jump ball. Good cover by Pacific in the back. Hadnor pass. Sanchez to Hadnor. A good long rally going on. Pacific will send it back over. Florida will try to run the play. 
Heather right the backslide, Doug in the back row. And Pacific comes back to the answer, and guess who? Elsa Stegman. What a great rally that was. Unbelievable rally. You can see Mary Wine standing applauding as well. An amazing dig by the setter, Kara Gormsman, to keep that ball alive, and Pacific just lucked out, catching Hattendorf unaware. Heather right on the backslide, tools the block, and sign out to Florida. A quiet game against BYU for Heather Wright, and the middle play of her will be uh, counted on heavily tonight. 9-6 lead for Pacific. Jamie Ham with the kill. Whitehead couldn't come up with it. Ham is so quick. She earned that starting spot about halfway through the season, was just a back row player. I think the best passer in the country has become such an offensive threat. She's really got a lot of heat cross court. Heather Wright with the touch. They ran that back slide again, and the junior middle blocker made the right kill. Side out for Florida. So quick off of one foot, moves completely parallel to the net, and that's a new look. Normally that slide right, you take off in front of the setter. This time she takes off behind the setter. Very difficult to block. And that ball is out, so a sign out for Pacific. Smith showing some versatility along with her team. Four fillers for Smith, and you have to give a lot of credit to the setter, Kara Gormsman, who's setting a lot of hot hands, making it tough for Florida to predict. Whitehead, a blocker. And on the backslide, Pacific with the point, also a net violation. Pacific the first to 10 here in game one. They lead 10 6. Passing crucial right now for Florida. Quick side out off of good offense by a pass. Fans back row attack. Stegman with the dig. McRae sends it back over. Stegman just tips it over. Florida couldn't cover. 11 6 lead for Pacific. Timeout, Florida. And Florida did everything right on that play except dig that ball. They were in perfect position. Mary Wise says of Elsa Stegman, a third of her kills come off the off speed shots. We need to adjust. That's exactly what Florida did. You see Hattendorf and Manns, everybody prepared. They first get the dig. Elsa Stegman, Florida does not want to hit the ball to left back. They get the dig. They set Elsa and watch the roll shot. So deceptive. She still puts a little bit of heat on it. Hattendorf is in position, as is Manns. The only thing they don't do right is scoop that ball up. So far, so good for the Tigers of Pacific. A record of... 1-2 this year, Florida at 33-2. And, and the Florida huddle as they try to make some adjustments, momentum-wise, too. You can tell that the crowd has had some part in this, and uh, Pacific playing well with the crowd. Which is interesting, because we talked about this earlier, the experience factor for Florida, I think, is to their advantage. They've been here three consecutive years. They've made it to the national semifinals. So this group of players knows what it's like to play in high-pressure situations. University of the Pacific has not hosted a regional since 1990, so it's it's a different story for them. None of these players were there during that time. None of these players have been to a national championship, so I thought perhaps Pacific would feel the pressure early. So far, they're not. Florida, four of the five regional titles they've won have come at home. Their one road win at Wisconsin in 1997. They defeated Wisconsin 3-2 to get to the Final Four. And Pacific, well, they're trying to get to Hawaii as well. The last time they were in a national championship, you saw that 90 banner in Maryland, lost to UCLA in the finals. McRae on the attack. The 6-1 sophomore from Longview, Texas, gets a good swing at it. Side out Florida, Jen Sanchez needs to run some points here for Florida. Good serve. Bump set. Good cover. Mans. Sets Whitehead. Oh, and she got it in there just in front of the diving. And once again, it was all about Chris Bova keeping the ball alive. What a tremendous asset she is in the backcourt. And that time, Bova couldn't handle the attack by Tracy Chambers. Chambers at 6 3, hitting 383. Chris Bova, defensive specialist from Milwaukee. Florida has trouble with that, so Pacific, a chance to score again. Here's the dig. And again, Florida cannot run a play. 
Good block at the net. Stegman, the touch, free ball. Oh! Wow. Mistiming the jump, it looked like Tracy Chambers couldn't make the play. Sign out Florida. And meanwhile, Nicole McRae coming down a little tender, wincing after that, trying to go with that joust play. Seems to be okay, but certainly didn't come down naturally. Backslide. And a hit by Chambers. Sign out to Pacific. They Chambers lead here in game one, 11 7. It's just all business. You can tell how confident she is, a veteran player who makes a silly mistake, and then instantly Gormson goes right back to her for the kill. And off of the pass. Quick hit by McRae. Good dig by Smith. Oh, Jim Sanchez from the floor makes a play. The attack. Violation on Florida after the net. The violation on Hattendorf. Pacific now serving 12-7. Amazing defense, though, by the senior Jen Sanchez, who not only can set the ball, but plays a very complete game. McRae. Again, that's been a good play for Florida with Nicole McRae right now. Right, you can tell that Pacific is focusing on other attackers because those last two times McRae has virtually been without a block up. Credit Jen Sanchez, the setter, for recognizing that. She's taking a quick peek at Pacific's defense before she sets the ball. McRae will serve now. Florida is down by five, 12-7. Oh, Gormson yeah. with the dump over. It's a beautiful pass by Jamie Hamm. I think if you're Florida, you want to keep the serve away from Jamie Hamm. I think she's one of the best passers in the country. Serve deep corners, move them around, keep it away from number two. Gormson on the serve. And the quick hit that time by Heather Wright. Good job by Sanchez. The passes haven't been all that good, and I think Sanchez does, does a nice job of running them down right now and making the play. Well, that's a sign of a great setter. I think she's one of the best in the country because of that, and she also knows when to go to the hot player. Stegman hits it wide of the mark down the line. Point Florida. So now Jenny Manns will serve 8-12. And John Dunning wants a timeout. And Mary Wise feeling a little bit better because momentum starting to maybe come a little bit over her way. And this is a good scoring rotation for Florida. Mans does move into the backcourt, but she's got that heavy top spin serve. Also, she's such an asset out of the back row that she can score points on any area of the court. So this is a very strong scoring rotation for the Gators. Timeout here in game one. And the Gator basketball team hosts High Point on Sunday, December 19th at 1 p.m. in the O'Connell Center. A limited number of tickets remains, and Florida students getting free with ID, so call for tickets at 1-800-34-GATOR. Those Gators, big win today, ranked number 10 in the nation. Great season so far. That's a fan of uh, Jenny Whitehead. A couple there. Uh, her family's here, her mother, stepfather. And we know who uh, those two are rooting for right away, don't we? Certainly so. Made the big trip from Jenison, Michigan. Florida right now down by four. 12-8 is our score. Steve Babbitt along with Heather Cox. Glad to have you with us. Each team had little trouble in their semifinal matches. Florida took care of BYU last night. Three zip. And then Pacific. An easy go of it against Northern Iowa 3-zip. The reason Pacific was so successful against the undefeated Northern Iowa team was because of passing flawless ball control last night to make an easy win. Good serve there by Manns. On the middle attack, the big hit by Jenica Smith right down the middle. Sign out to Pacific. Very impressive hit that time because Jenica was forced about three feet off the net. That two high set out of the middle, very hard to hit when you're pulled off. Pass by Manns, back row attack. Ooh, nice location on that back row attack by Jenny Manns. And normally Manns hits that back row into the deep corner, this time gets a little bit more angle on it, able to snap with her wrist. Geraldine Hattendorf serving for Florida. Roll shot by Ham and nobody there. A little miscommunication defensively, and nobody took it. What Florida's trying to do is mix up the defensive looks that they give the Tigers, especially when Elsa Stegman is hitting. What I think that might be doing, though, is causing a little bit of confusion out there on the court. 
Coming in for Pacific is Courtney Miller, a serving specialist. She has got one of the toughest serves to receive. I had a chance to try and pass some of her serves. Very low floaters, a lot like a knuckleball coming from a pitcher. And right now, timeout uh, as Tom Pingle talks with John Dunning, and we'll see if they're checking perhaps the rotation. I think they're checking to see who the accurate server is. Steve, you're right. This is a momentum killer, too. This is very tough. A good move for Florida. Hopes that they get the side out. And an illegal substitution call. So Jamie Hamm, check that. Danny Shin comes back into the match instead of Courtney Miller. All right, Danielle Shin serving 12-8. Hadnor passes to Sanchez. Back row attack. Man, blocked. Sanchez sends it back over and gets the side out. Sanchez really detecting that Tracy Chambers, the middle blocker for Pacific, is favoring the attackers. Sanchez doing a nice job looking at the defense, as I mentioned, and seeing that she's open or who her outside hitters are open. Pisboba serving now. Ham with the pass. Jenica Smith puts it home on the floor. Sign on again for Pacific. And Smith has played well so far. Six kills here in game one. And no errors hitting 86% on the day. That will frustrate the Florida coaching staff. That's the one thing they're really focusing on is slowing down Smith. Mans again back row. That time in the net. Four hits coming on Florida. Point for Pacific. Now serving at 13-8. Again, Jenica Smith, the deep serve. Oh, great play by Sanchez. Once again, Sanchez just really taking over, being the leader of this team. The one-handed set that looked like an instant kill for Pacific, and instead, Florida with the side out. Good serve by Jen Sanchez. Recovered by Hadnorf. Bump set by Boba. Somebody's got to hit it back over. It's Jerilyn Hadnorf. Free ball for Pacific. Again, oh, we got a violation. Net violation again on Florida. And side out to Pacific. Ham will serve 13-8. Jenny Whitehead blocked at the net. Stegman on the attack. That ball is going out. Bubba went after it. Point Pacific. They'll now serve for game one. They're up 14 to 8. Right now is where experience is so valuable. Florida cannot get rattled. Must side out. Mans, not a good pass. Back to Mans. A little tip over. Covered by Pacific. They send it back over. It's out. And Pacific will take game one. 15 to 8. As the crowd here at the Alex G. Spano Center cheers on the home team, the Tigers. And game one's in the book. No blocks for the Florida Gators. That is a difference. That's a huge key for Florida and Mary Weiss's squad to get some blocks up, not allow Pacific to hit 46% in game one. All right, the Tigers have game one. Back with more from Stockton, California, between Florida and Pacific after this timeout on Sunshine. Want to become an expert on the Florida Gators? Want to get inside the program? The easiest way is to subscribe to Gator Bait Magazine. Now in its 20th year, Gator Bait is your number one source for Gator sports. Game stories, player features, recruiting, analysis. It's all covered in every issue of Gator Bait by an award-winning staff. Subscribe today and receive 32 full-color issues plus the preseason football and basketball yearbooks. Call 1-800-782-3216 or log on at www.gatorbait.net. Don't wait. Get Gator Bait. And welcome back to Sunshine Network's coverage of the East Regional Finals here in Stockton, California. The game one in the books. 
Pacific a winner over Florida, 15 to 8. I'm Steve Babick along with Heather Cox. And Heather, defense is so critical. Take a look at this sequence. Florida a little bit out of sync. Right, very frustrating game for Florida because their game plan was perfect. What they want to do is switch up the defensive looks, but this time they beat themselves at their own game. Watch Jenny Whitehead at left front pull off the net. Normally she'd stay back, but instead they switch it up. She comes way into the middle of the court, and that confuses everybody because that ball fell normally where Whitehead would stand in a typical rotation defense, but instead they switch things up. And very frustrating because when you look at the Gators and their game plan, they followed it to perfection, hit 35% as a team, but defensively with zero blocks were not able to contain the Tigers' very potent offense. Also, they did what they wanted to do in the middle. White and Wright and McRae combined for nine kills, just one error. They, they hung tough defensively with Diggs. It's amazing to look at paper and realize that Florida lost that one 15 to 8. And Florida with no service aces, and Mary Wise thought that serving would be a key, and a good passing by Pacific in the back row. And when they didn't have a good pass, the key was they were able to just throw it up high to the outside to somebody like Stegman or Ham, who can still put the ball away on an off play. That's what makes UOP such a good transition team. Even in chaos, they're very versatile. They can still get the job done. Pacific, they were champs of the Big West Conference. Florida champs of the SEC, but... They're playing for bigger stakes tonight, a chance to go to the Final Four. And Pacific, a tremendous season with John Dunning. They have swept 25 teams this year. An amazing record, that 31-2. and two. One of those losses came to Stanford in five games, the other to Santa Barbara in three. Ironically, after that Santa Barbara match is when John decided to change the lineup, moved Jenica Smith to the right side, brought Kara Gormson in as the setter, and moved Danny Shin into the middle, leaving Jamie Hamm a front row spot. Game one to Pacific, 15-8. Pacific serves game two. Hold on the attack. Back set, Whitehead on the hit. Smith on the dig. Stegman, the roll shot. And again, Florida not getting a good look at it, so they'll send it back over. Stegman, the dig, covered by Jen Sanchez. But Florida just sends it back over. Stegman, locked. Boba, Sanchez, McCray. Dawson sends it back. Pacific covers. McCray on the block of a Stegman attack. Stegman says try again. Boba. Bump set. Hattendorf back row. Four hits on Florida. What a great rally. Right Defense. now it looks like that Pacific get a little better looks running their offense than Florida. Certainly so, Steve. Florida is giving UOP way too many free ball opportunities. UOP not capitalizing on them, but enduring through the long rallies. Florida needs to attack better. McCray blocked of the net. That might have been the center, Gormson. The third team block for Pacific finally able to stop McCray. The first hitting error out of the middle by McCray. Florida's middle is so successful up to this point. Pacific up to a 2-0 lead. Manz was blocked. Whitehead blocked, blocked out though, so sign out for Florida. Florida down 2-0 here in game two. We'll have Jenny Whitehead in the back there serving. Nice serve. Good pass though. Stegman blocked. And again, Florida can do nothing but just send it back over. Stegman, the attack. Dig by Whitehead. Florida cannot come up with it. Well, you have to give the Gators a lot of credit. They are touching a lot of balls in the backcourt, thanks in large part to Chris Bova. She is not letting anything go by her. Florida sets their uh, serve-receive unit on the uh, serve here. Back set, McCray tips it, but it's covered. And the quick play by Danielle Shin in the net. A nice idea by Gormson to try and run the middle in transition. I think that's very important for Pacific to not only score points out of the middle on serve-receive when it's easier because you have a better pass, but to also run it in transition. Hartley will check in. She'll serve. Also checking in for Florida, Heather Wright. Sitting down, Bova and McCray. Stegman, the roll shot, blocked by Wright. Heather Wright, known for her blocking, comes through that time. Wright has such good timing on her block. She recognizes the approach pattern of the attacker, lines right up with the hitting shoulder. Florida with the point, so now serving 1-2 is Nikki Hartley. Yes! Yes! No! Oh 
Florida gets it over. Boston sets high outside Stegman. Good dig by Jenny Whitehead. Hands on the dink shot, didn't happen. That time right is blocked. And a carry on Florida sign out to Pacific. Pacific tough at the net. And the setter, Kara Gormson, doing a nice job blocking. That time left one-on-one -on -one with Wright, a much taller, more physical player. And Gormson putting up a very steady block. Gormson was at Arizona her first year. She serves long, and then she transferred to Pacific and actually was not the uh, starting setter. <laughs> no, not at all throughout the beginning of the season. Tanya Dmitrievich was the starting setter. John's gone back and forth. In fact, doesn't let the starters know who's starting until about two minutes before game time. So they've really gone back and forth, Kara finding out just moments before they took the court that she would be setting in this match. But John's certainly not afraid to switch up to Dmitrievich if he needs to. Stegman serves long after Mann served hers in the net, so even the, the two better servers have their off days. Well, both of those serves are high-risk serves. They're high ace, but also high air types with the top spin. Gerald Handorf serves, and oh, man! Rosenquist was trying to get out of the way, and she ran into the ball. That's a tough play, and give a lot of credit to the serving strategy of Florida. What they're doing is they're moving Pacific back and then forward. She knows that ball's going out, just can't move quick enough. Ace by Hattendorf, Florida ties the score at 2-2. Two. Big block by Whitehead. Jen Whitehead, one-on-one -on -one against Jenica Smith, and she wins the battle. And that's how you block Jenica Smith. You drop your hand seam. Watch Whitehead's right hand. She drops it in at the last minute. That's exactly where Smith likes to hit. Quick set, attack, Florida block, they covered, here comes Pacific again, and another block, Heather Wright, so back-to-back -back blocks by Florida, the point for the Gators, they have a lead now, 4-2, and John Dunning takes a timeout, so Florida playing a whole lot better here in game two than the game one, they lost 15-8, back with more action after this timeout on Sunshine. Doug gave it to Madeline. Edith gave it to Walter and Roy. Richard gave it to Earl. Dr. Marsh gave it to his patients. Have you got it yet? It's Juno. The internet service so simple to use, everyone is passing it along to their friends. But you don't have to wait. Just call this number today for your free software. With Juno, you don't have to be a computer whiz to get online. If you can do this, you can use the web. With Juno, anyone can send and receive email, get the latest news, check stock prices, make travel reservations, all with free technical support. Your first month is free, and every month after that you'll save compared to America Online. It's that easy. Just call this number. Don't be the last one to get online. Juno, everybody's getting it. For your free month of Juno, call toll-free today. The Lady Gator basketball team hosts the State Farm Classic on December 28th and 29th in the O'Connell Center. First run action on Tuesday, Florida faces perennial power Western Kentucky at 7. And on December 29th at 7, Lady Gators will take on either Boston College or Maine. And a halftime enjoy a fireworks uh, display and uh, welcome in the new year. And Gerilyn Handorf with the ace, so Florida up to a 5-2 lead here on Game 2. Momentum shift now for the Gators. And uncharacteristic communication errors by Pacific with six senior starters on the floor. They need to be talking a little bit better. And Jenica Smith lets her arm swing to the talking right there. Side out for Pacific. Serving now, Danielle Shin. Nice pass. Heather Wright. Thompson with the dig. Mans for Florida. Whitehead on the outside. She's blocked. Both teams did a good job in their back row defense. That hit by Smith is out. Shine out Florida. Florida lucking out once again, giving Pacific a free ball opportunity. And it's amazing how few times Pacific has actually scored when Mary Weiss's squad just has to give a free ball bump over the net. McCray checks back in for Florida in the front row. Chris Boba, the silver. McCray, who's a little bit tender on that right ankle, she's certainly favoring it after a joust at the net in game one. A 
Dig attempt by Chris Bova, and she is hurt. She is down on the floor. And time is called. A great effort by Bova. She went reaching to make a dig. Let's take a look what happened. Coming in from the back row. Great hustle by Bova. Comes in. Looks like she may have taken a knee. Okay, this is a tough one. Um, the ball went game. out. And now... Certainly an amazing performance by Chris so far in this match. 12 digs. She has just been an invaluable asset to the Gators. So Mary Wise calls the rest of the team over and uh, trying to regroup them. We're in game two. Our score is 5-2 Florida after losing game one, 15-8. Now the uh, surface here is the uh, sports court surface, not the hardwood floor, but the players do like the surface. And, uh, we haven't seen anything happen the last two days. Yeah, it's a lot more forgiving than the standard floor, but I don't think the floor had anything to do with this one. It was more of a collision between two players, and certainly a hush has taken over here in Spano Center. And they try to get Chris Bova up to her feet. Let's take another look at what happened. This is our end zone shot. Bova number four blue comes in to dig this tip. Now watch Whitehead and the collision as she rolls over. Looks like Whitehead's knee may have gone in to the kidney back area of Chris Bova. I hate to speculate. All right, Chris Bova will go and sit down, and uh, Florida now will resume. They have a lead of 5-2. Pacific will be serving. Heather right back into the match in the backcourt for Chris Bova. She will be a passer now. Look for UOP with Courtney Miller to capitalize on that and serve right back area one. McCray on the attack, hits it wide. Not a good pass. Sanchez trying to get something going, and McCray hit it wide. Heather Wright hasn't played back row all season long. Chris Bova, a definite standard substitution for her. Kenny Manns, the roll shot, covered by Pacific. They attack. And again, Florida scrambles to get the ball over. Chambers on the dink. Sanchez blocked at the net. Thompson sets Ham. Hatdorf covers. And McCray, another miss hit. Point for Pacific. They're within one. It's Florida five, Pacific four. This is a good move by Mary Wise, calling the timeout, letting her team regroup after the Chris Bova injury. Also, obviously, has some instructions for her middle blocker, Nicole McCray. Yeah, Florida had a little bit of momentum taken away, unfortunately, by the injury at stopped play. And Chris Bova. We'll find out. She went off the floor with Lori Dottie, the uh, trainer for Florida. And we'll see when we can get a report and see what the status is of Chris Bova. That's obviously something that happens in any athletic competition. The key is how do you let it affect you? You saw both teams immediately huddle up and then get off of the court to try and get away from the injury as much as they're all feeling for Chris Bova and the injury. Important to remain focused and try and keep that momentum. Pacific took game one by a score of 15 to eight. And here we are in game two for Florida leading 5-4. Good crowd on hand tonight at the Alex Spano Center here on the campus of the University of the Pacific in Stockton, California. All the other regions are done. We know that Stanford will be in Hawaii, along with Penn State and Long Beach State. And don't be surprised, Stanford is just an hour and a half west of Stockton. Don't be surprised to see a Don Shaw, perhaps, or one of the assistants here scouting the winner of this match. And all three winners won by 3-0 scores. It's amazing to see that there's so much parity in volleyball, especially this year with the entire field of 64. We saw some upsets early with Texas A&M beating Hawaii, but once we got to the regional final action, very easy work. Pacific on the serve, and that one by Courtney Miller is wide. Service air, and now serving for Florida, Jen Sanchez. As the coaches look on. Back set, attempt by Chambers, covered by Florida. Florida runs the same play, Mans is dug. Kenny Mans again, hits it long. Pacific into the net though, big point for the Gators. And you know right now, Steve, Pacific is tipping way too much. They are a potent, powerful offensive team. They need to take advantage of that. They're probably the better blocking team. They need to hit through Florida's block instead of tip, because Florida's digging every single tip attempt. 
Florida had no aces in game one. They've got a couple here in game two. That was won by Jen Sanchez. Four to seven, Pacific four. Double block at the net. Jen Whitehead tipped it over, but the ball got tipped back by Gormson and fell in. And you know, setters have an uncanny ability to win the joust. I don't care how much you're overmatched with height, but setters always win. The key to winning a joust, be the last one to touch it, which is exactly what Gormson did. Sophomore Jamie Hamm on the serve for Pacific. Nicole McRae on the quick attack, and that time successful right down the middle. And that's the risk that you take when you're Pacific and you've decided to commit block with Mans. McRae will be open one-on-one -on -one or without a block. Credit Sanchez for recognizing it. Good short serve by Whitehead. Stegman, though, with the big arm swing, and Elsa Stegman gets the side out. And there's a shot of Chris Boba, yeah, walking back. Again, Lori Dotty, the trainer. And uh, we'll see if Chris Boba able to come back in sometime and resume action. Jenny Mann's on the hit as it dug out, shot out Florida. Nice job moving Jenny Mann's from antenna to antenna. Rather than just having her hit the high five, the back hit, moving her in front of the setter for the two makes it a little bit harder. Pacific always has to watch where she's attacking from. Sophomore Nikki Hartley on the serve. Pacific, high set to Stegman. Hits it long. Point Florida, so Florida now will be serving eight to four. And Stegman says, my fault. And Chris Bobo right now just happy to be here after that little bit of an injury scare. Stegman. That time she got it down, hit on top of the ball on side out Pacific. And great adjustment that time by the setter. Kara Gormson brought the ball down a little bit. Stegman likes a high balloon set, but the one before could have brought rain. It was so high. This time a little bit lower right to the antenna. Perfect timing. Elsa doesn't have to slow down her approach. The hammer, Jenny Manns with the answer and a sign out. What a great battle between Manns and Stegman. Two of the hardest hitters you'll find. It's amazing and it's fun to see whether or not they'll neutralize one another or whether one will really excel over the other. So far, both doing a phenomenal job. Manns has been very successful the last two attempts hitting out of the middle. Great pass on that serve and Stegman answers, pulls the block. But a great pass on the serve off of Manns. And Stegman continues to mix things up. I thought she went to the tip a little bit too much earlier in this game. The last two have been very powerful attacks. She leads all players tonight with 14 kills. There's that jump serve by Stegman. And Florida scrambles. Man has helped out and made a play. The dig. And Florida cannot run it down near the press table. Point for Pacific. They cut into that Gator lead. It's Florida 8 Pacific 5. Mary Wise asking for one pass. That is the key to running this offense. And the serve is picked up by Florida. The attack, Jenny Manns blocked at the net, dug in the back row. Florida covers as well. Good play by Jen Sanchez to dump the ball over. Sanchez has done a very nice job being an active part of this offense. She's taken a lot of opportunities on the tight passes. This her fourth kill of the night. She keeps it deceptive. She goes up with two hands and makes it look like a jump set. The block at the net by Florida. A dig in the back row by Hartley of Florida. Back row attack, Jenny Manns. A tip at the net. It goes by Pacific's defense. Point for Florida. They're now up 9-5. They lost game one, 12-8. I'm sorry, 15-8. And they rebounded nicely here in game two. And it's fun to see Jenny Manns so involved. She has been such an integral part, integral part of Florida's success the last four years. Gormson backside set. Locked at the net on the attack by Sheen. Back row, nope, Mans will just send it back over. The block there by right. Pacific covers. The attack high, no touch. Touch call. Oh, uh, touch call. Both line officials calling the touch off the high ball, and that's something that Jamie Hamm is so good at. Because she's a little bit smaller than most outside hitters, she's listed at six feet tall, I think that's a little generous. She does crafty things. She goes high hands, goes for the fingers. You can see the ball change direction. That indicates a touch. Well, well shot there by Whitehead. I thought he hit the floor, but Pacific played it, so Florida ball on. Oh, ball on the floor. Time out. Somehow a ball got on the floor. Fortunately, nobody hurt. And the official stop play will have a restart. 
Oh, that could be well, scary. You don't see that very often. Very scary. So oh. many ankle and knee injuries off of falling onto a ball during practice. All right, Daniel Shanley. Short serve. Florida picks it up. Wide hit on the attack. Good fight at the net. Net violation on number one, Gormson. So John Dunning will talk to his team while Florida will get set to serve. Florida serving 9-5. Couple of chaotic plays. Both teams trying to settle down, slow things down a little bit. And Chris Bova back into the match. A huge bright spot for Florida. Chris Bova shaking up earlier, back in there serving. Good block there by McCray. Pacific regroups, they're going to attack again. And Gerilyn Handorf couldn't get that one off the upswing of Jamie Hamm. Jamie Hamm, interesting story, Nebraska did not offer her a scholarship, so she came out west. Amazing, she is actually from Lincoln, Nebraska. Her mom and Terry Pettit, the head coach at Nebraska, friends for about 25 years. She had the possible opportunity to walk on, and I bet Terry Pettit's a little sorry he missed her, let her get away. Back slide, McCray, dug in the back row. And Chambers able to put it in the right deep corner. Sometimes you just got to know where you put the ball. That is what you call veteran savvy. That is a, a look at Elena Odin of years past. She was always known for finding those deep corners on the off play. That is the one vulnerable spot of a defense. That's really the area that the block is supposed to take away. Former Olympian Elena Odin, proud alumnus of Pacific. We'll take a look at Courtney Miller on the serve for ULP. Boba with the pass. McCray blocked. Florida covers. Sanchez sent it over, but picked up by Pacific back row. Stegman pulls the block. Pacific with the point, and they've come back. They have been able to run. Two points in a row. It's now four to nine. Pacific seven. Pat North. McCray on the quick attack that time. Nice pass by Gerald Handor, key that offensive series. Ball control so key for Sanchez to have three viable attackers at all time, and McCray having a great night so far. Six kills early. Backs by Chambers. Florida covers. McCray sends it back over. That ball will go around. Florida with the point. So here in game two, it is Florida to 10 first. And that is such a benchmark. You're always trying to be the first one to 10. Pacific was first to 10 in game one. They went on to win 15-8. And what a seesaw game in game two. We've seen with the Bova injury, we saw a lot of momentum changes. And it's been all about serve and pass in the second game. The team that's gotten the pass to target has had a much more viable offense. And blocking has been a factor. Florida doing a much nicer job. Three team blocks here in the second game after having no blocks in game one. Chris Boba on that injury, a contusion bruise to the lower back, and they uh, applied ice, gave her an aspirin, and said, go back in there and play, and Chris Boba says, I ain't going to miss out I on wipe this. Wipe a little dirt in it. <laughs> Basically, I have to carry somebody out on a stretcher not to come back in a match of this importance. Yeah, this is for uh, the trip to Hawaii to join the other three teams out there in the Final Four. Mary Wise did a nice job between games one and two. After losing game one, obviously made some adjustments. And uh, between Mary Wise and John Dunning, two of the best in strategy. Uh, we certainly expected to see a chess match, and that's exactly what we're seeing tonight. Both teams utilizing substitution patterns, trying to create matchups, especially blocking matchups, and also doing a nice job with the serving strategy. We're seeing a lot of different tendencies, and for Florida, they're trying to mix things up with the defensive looks that they give Pacific. We've got the band, we've got the crowd, and we've got the teams here in the East Regional Final. Florida serving 10-7. Jamie Hamm, the roll shot. Sanchez, little pass up front to Mans. Pacific recovers. Jamie Hamm down the left line, counting. Side out Pacific. And what an excellent compliment Ham is to Elsa Stegman. She is getting just as many kills, really helping this team because she's one more weapon tooling the block so well she sees it. McCray with the answer down the middle. Boy, Nicole McCray, she's picked a good time to help out offensively. Eight kills now. It's hard to imagine that she's a red shirt freshman. I saw her in the first match of her career, went up against Lauren Ketchiamani, one of the best blockers at Penn State, and had just a phenomenal night. Oh, man, can you get any higher up and hit down on the ball than Tracy Chambers just did? 
Absolutely not. Such a veteran player. And she's all business. That is the face that you will see, whether it's game one, game five, whether the first match of the season or the last. She gets the job done. Back to Jenny Manns. Blocked. Florida covers, though. And that time, Jordan Handorf blocked in. So that's a point for Pacific. And they'll now serve a 10. I can't say enough about the setter. Number one, White, doing a great job timing-wise. Turns that right hand in so Hattendorf can't tool her. Nicole McClay again on the quick attack. Jen Sanchez knows who's the high hitter right now. And McCray was up there, so she was smart to feed McCray. And that's exactly what John Dunning told Pacific. They said Sanchez is an incredible setter, but realize that she will go to the hot hitter. So recognize who that hot hitter is and commit block to that person. Nikki Hartley serving for Florida at 10-8. Stegman blocked. Good cover, though, by Chambers. Now four defensively make a play. Jenny Mans covered. Heather Wright sends it back. Counted. Heather Wright won the battle. Good rally though on both sides. And Heather Wright gets the point. 11-8 now Florida. And a special hello to Heather Wright's family in Indiana. She made me promise that we'd send well wishes. Chris Bogle wanted us to do it as well. And we thought, you know what? We should just say hello to all the families of the Florida players. And Florida, geographically, they're spread out. Players from the Sunshine State. And also... Uh, Texas, Indiana, Illinois, a little bit of everywhere. Hattendorf with the roll shot, picked up in the back row. Stegman on the attack. With the kill, side out Pacific. Boy, you can see such a difference when Elsa Stegman is in rhythm. Very hard to stop. When the set's the exact speed, she gets her full approach. It's fun to watch. Gormson on the serve. Mans chose to uh, dink it. Stegman blocked. And those sets are just way too far off the net. Gormson has to get the set about one to two feet off the net. The last couple have been fading back about the eight foot line. All right, Jenny Mans will have that top spin serve going. 11 to eight, Florida leads game two. They're down 0 one in games, and oh, she missed that one. Way long on the serve. Florida had an excellent serving night against BYU last night. Not so in this match with Pacific. Stegman, her jump serve. Good pass by Hattendorf. Heather Ryan. That play was set up again by the pass, and then Heather Wright with the finish. And what makes it so difficult to defend is you're not sure as a blocker whether she's going to hit in front of the setter or behind. At the very last minute, you can't tell. Florida with the tip and the cover. The hit that time by Sanchez as the attacker. Hartley on the dig. Heather Wright. Good play by Gormson. Free ball over to Florida side. Backslide, Heather Wright. Great effort by Pacific, but count the point for Florida. Heather Wright now starting to get in the groove. And Florida, 12-8 with the lead. Heather Wright hitting 54% with eight kills combined with McRae's nine kills. And Florida's middle attack has been awesome. Jennica Smith got the touch at the net. The ball went beyond the Florida back row defense. Shine out to Pacific. Jenica Smith, a roommate of Elsa Stegman's. They're very familiar friends, along with Tracy Chambers, the three of them, four-year starters here at Pacific, have played many matches together. Hands on the pass, backslide Heather Wright. Boy, she's starting to feel it. Heather Wright, that's her play. Sign out Florida. And UOP needs to continue to commit block a little bit more to her. If she gets hotter and hotter, you know that Sanchez has continued to go back to her. All right, the rotation now calls for Chris Boba to come in to serve. Nicole McRae comes in up front. And you don't lose anything with McRae. She's had a great night as well with nine kills. Again, Smith down the middle. Same play, same result. Exactly, and the second time that it's gone high off the hands of the block and just over the heads of the back row defenders. Getting ready to serve, and she takes, takes a deep drop. That's Jenica Smith. These are hard to receive because they float. They have so much more time in the air. McCray that time got blocked. They found out where she was going, and they had the Chambers block on. Chambers stays with her, knows that Sanchez is in the backcourt, jumps with McCray. Whitehead is blocked. Sends it back over. Chambers blocks the net. 
Jump ball off the net. Tip by Florida. Bobo up front. Jim Sanchez. And that's four hits on Florida. Florida gives away a point. Now Pacific is at 10. It's Florida 12, Pacific 10. Tigers on a 2-0 run. And with that, Mary Wise says, let's take a timeout. And once again, I go back to the pressure, the experience that Florida has, even though they're playing away from home, I think that this is a group that can handle the pressure that Pacific is putting on them right now because so many of these players are veteran players. They're playing for the opportunity to play in their fourth national championship, so they know what it's like to be here. Gator basketball fans, avoid the parking hassles on game day and catch the RTS Fast Break Shuttle. Park in the commuter lot on North South Drive and ride the free shuttle to and from the O'Connell Center. It's that simple. Don't miss the bus. Ride the Fast Break Shuttle all season long. Well, these teams, whoever wins, nobody's taking the bus here because they want to take the long plane ride to Hawaii and be at the Final Four. And, you know, we expected a, a classic battle between these two teams because of uh, their record, their coaches, their players, and we're, we're getting that right now. I, I am so just honored to be here and see such great volleyball. I mean, this is what it is all about. What an amazing opportunity to play for the chance to go to the national championship. And these players know what's at stake. They certainly do, and they are performing flawlessly right now. It's fun to hear Pacific talk about the fact going back to Hawaii. We talked about the fact that Hawaii was upset in the regional semis. Pacific really feels that if they have the chance to go, that crowd of 16,000 that sold out will be for Pacific. They used to be in the Big West with Hawaii, and, and Hawaii fans really love Pacific Volleyball, and they're hoping that they would have that home court advantage should they get to go on. Shanika Smith on the serve. Hatton off the pass. McCray blocked. Florida covers. Back row attack, man's blocked and could not be controlled by Pacific Santa Florida. Florida now serving at 12-10. Man's, man's is hitting about 90% from the backcourt. Pacific just hasn't found a way to stop her yet. Middle attack by Chambers. Off the dig and ten by Jim Sanchez. Santa Pacific and Pacific again trying to cut into that lead. Florida's up 12-10. You can see the uh, service story right there. Three aces by Florida, none yet by Pacific. And oh, a mistake on the pass. Elsa Stegman sends it back, and now Pacific within one. Pacific may not have the surface aces, but what they're doing is serving well enough to force Florida into poor passing. Whitehead on the attack, hits it too far. We're tied 12-12, and the passing has hurt Florida the last two points. Momentum shifting out to the Tigers. Good pass. And a block. Chambers on the block. Pacific has taken the lead. A 5-0 run for the Tigers. They're up 13-12 here in game two. Blocking the story this time. It's Elsa Stegman. The left side goes up strong. Doesn't get tooled. That's a tough set to block. Florida needs to sign out bad. Jenny Mans, the dink shot is covered. Stegman, the big hit, blocked. Wide hit, sets Mans. Good take by hand. Stegman again, covered by Florida. Hack North, Jen Sanchez, back set. Right hand, yes. Oh boy, Florida needed a sign out bad, they got it. And they have to now battle from behind by one. And they needed a little heat from Jenny Whitehead, who's got her kill. She's got six, but she's hitting just 100%. She needs to hit the threes for Florida to win. All right, we're set for Jenny Whitehead to serve. Florida down by one. Look for Elsa to tip short cross court should she get the ball, but instead it's all Chambers. Big hit by Chambers on the back slide. Tracy Chambers. With the kill, her 10th, Pacific, Dunning, yes, sir. Dunning calling that play and recognizing Florida's change. The defense once again, cross-court shot is open for Elsa Stegman on the outside. Tracy Chambers, 6'3", senior. Atmore on the pass for Florida. Jenny Manns. McCray sends it back. But a good play by Pacific, they cover. Man sets Hadnor, and 
Handorf got it in. Geraldine Handorf had a good match against BYU, and that time came up with a big side out one. And she's carrying a lot of pressure right now because Pacific is really trying to serve her, especially when she's a front row player that's back there passing, making her touch a lot of balls, stay very focused. And Paul McCray on the serve, and right in that service there on Florida, side off back to Pacific. And interesting that Mary Wise didn't bring Nikki Hartley in before the McRae serve, instead brings her in now. Normally we see Hartley come in to actually serve the ball for McRae. All right, serving now for Pacific, Kara Gormson, the center, serving 13-12 here in game two. Game one went to Pacific, 15-8. That was going on. Right on the quick kill, that was going out, but they played it. Pacific, they're one point away from game two. Pacific is up 14-12. And once again, Smith finding that same play. They need to drop their inside hand to stop Smith's seam shot. Mans passes to Jen Sanchez, head to right. Good dig by Pacific. Four hits on Pacific. That one did not carry over. Sent out for Florida. And Florida right now fighting for their lives here in game two. John Dunning making a move. He'll bring in the back row specialist, Angela Rosenquist, coming in for Chambers. Jenny Manns will serve. Florida needs to run some points here with Manns. Rosenquist with the pass. Little scramble play at the net. Pacific on the attack. Whitehead with the dig. Back row attack Mans, but Gormson on the cover. Block at the net, Heather right off oh, Pacific, what a play off the net. Florida regroups. The dump over that time by Jen Sanchez. And Florida gets the point. What a great effort That's here amazing. in game two. And both teams playing like this is for all the marbles. And you're seeing the versatility of Elsa Stegman with the substitution. They changed her to the right side. She actually set Jenica Smith. Now watch the save. Not only does she get the ball up, but she controls her body, keeps it on her side of the net so it's not a violation. Jenny Mann's got one point on the serve. Can she get another? Pass, Stegman. It's a wide. We're tied at 14-14 here in game two. And Jenny Manns on the serve has brought new life back to Florida. A game to two. Must win by two. Rosenquist on the pass. Smith. Florida got the dig over. Stegman gets it by Hamburg. Side out for Sippen. Once again, Elsa set a little bit off the net, able to stay behind it and crank it sharp. She drops that shoulder just at the last minute to keep that ball in play. Jump serve by Stegman. Back slide. Had the right miss hit it. Point Pacific there. A point away from game two. Second game point. Pacific serving 15-14. Stegman on the jump serve. A back row attack with Manns, play at the net. Quick set. Tipped over by Jen Sanchez. The attack. A runner that time by Jennifer Smith. Pacific wins game two, 16-14. And the ULP Tigers take a lead of two games to none. Right now, Pacific playing with so much confidence, so much maturity. This is what they've been playing for all season long, and you can tell that the pressure hasn't gotten to them. Florida, a much better blocking team in the second game, but UOP's offense too much, too balanced, too diversified for Florida's block to stop. Red's happy. Yeah, John Dunning says, whoo, that was tough. Florida battled well in game two, but Pacific had one more play, and they went 16-14. They'll take a two-game to none lead. Stay with us. We'll be back with our intermission break after this timeout right here on Sunshine Network. 
now available for the first time ever on home video, the best of the Dean Martin Celebrity Roasts. What a night! Who are we honoring? Jokes, jabs, insults, and put-downs. That's what made these roasts hilarious and makes this tape a must-have for your video library. Johnny Carson is a comedian who is seen every night in millions of bedrooms all over America. And that's why his last wife left him. <laughs> This tape features over 50 stars and over 100 minutes of the funniest, most outrageous laughs ever seen on television. How sweet it is. She wants to dye her hair back to its original color, but she can't remember. It takes many years to be a great comedian. Sure does. You ain't reached that year yet. <laughs> you know, some performers never have a night like this. Those are the lucky ones. Call now to order the best of the Dean Martin Celebrity Roasts for only $19.95. It's not sold in any store, so call and order right now. SunshineNetwork.com is the source for auto racing. From lap to lap, from the track and into the pits, log on to SunshineNetwork.com for all of the latest information on the checkered flag. Two games are in the books from the NCAA East Regional Championships here at the University of the Pacific. And right now it's Pacific leading Florida by a score of 15-8 and 16-14. So they have a two games to none lead over the Florida Gators. Hi, I'm Steve Babbitt, and we're in between our intermission break of games two and three. Now, the uh, coaching matchup, very good strategically, but Mary Wise and John Dunning, they know each other very well. In fact, they had a chance a couple summers ago to get to know each other a whole lot better because of a trip to Europe. And uh, even though they're fighting it out here for a trip to the Final Four, they're good friends, and we had a chance to talk to both Mary Wise and John Dunning about their coaching relationship. Yeah, Mary uh, and I got to know each other on a trip to Europe. You know, we our teams had played one another, and we knew each other from a distance. And we, when you travel for two weeks in a bus trapped with a whole bunch of people, you learn a lot about each other. She gave me some great trips for touring Europe, uh, which we used last year with our team. And, uh, you know, I think she's a really nice person. I like her husband, Mark. Uh, I think she's a ni really great family person. And I'm sure she treats her team that way. Uh, they've been in the Final Four so many times that that has to do with recruiting, but I think it might have to do more with the, with the skills that she teaches, that her teams always just handle the ball. They always know how to take care of it. They do things differently. It's, she's really fun to watch on the sidelines. She never sits down. I mean, I'm too, I, too old or too out of shape or something. I'd be too tired to do that stuff. We did become friends. Uh, two summers ago, we went um, with a group of former players and toured through Europe. We had a good time. I found out that John, the redhead, he's goofy, uh, but very competitive. And what I know in the matches that we played against him is that I will have to be on our A game, all of us, because he's such a terrific coach, gets the most out of his players. It's no surprise that Pacific is where they are right now. They've had a terrific season. If I was voting today, he'd be my choice for Coach of the Year. Welcome back. I can tell you what, uh, Jeremy Foley, his choice for Coach of the Year would be Mary Wise because Mary Wise has come into Florida and in the 90s has established the Gators as uh, one of the premier programs in the country, and we welcome Florida Athletic Director Jeremy Foley. Jeremy, Mary Wise in such a short time, tradition. You win, you establish tradition, she has. Well, she's done that, um, Steve, certainly. Um, she's been at the University of Florida for nine years, nine SEC championships. I think it's um, five or six Final Fours, obviously competing to go to do another Final Four tonight. She's just an outstanding coach, and you know, uh, even more so outstanding person, outstanding representative of the university, and obviously we're very proud that she's our head coach. Asked Mary Wise yesterday about the success and that she expected so quick, and she said, you know, when you have the area of Florida that you can recruit to and the facilities and the support, she said, uh, we knew there was a good chance of it, and uh, she took advantages of all the resources. Well, she's done that, and certainly at the University of Florida, we try to provide all our coaches the resources to be successful, and, and Mary has taken advantage of that. She's done an outstanding job recruiting, uh, and again, her, her record speaks for itself, Steve. College volleyball here in the 90s on the women's side has really taken off. It's a great sport. You can tell by the attendance here in Stockton. Great attendance back in Gainesville. It's a good sport to watch, isn't it? Well, it's a lot of fun. Obviously, we're not excited right now to be down um, two games, but the atmosphere in here is outstanding, and, and it is in Gainesville and certainly all across the country. It's just a big-time event, and certainly we're excited to be part of it. Jeremy, looking at some other things back in Gainesville, uh, good news today from basketball. A winner today, Billy Donovan. Kel Ross off to a good start. So both of the hoop programs running pretty good right now. Well, they're going very 
very, very well. Great job by both coaches. Billy and Carol do an outstanding job for us. And uh, again, we're looking forward to an outstanding season with both basketball programs. And we're also coming toward the end of a football season. The Gators get ready for the Citrus Bowl. And uh, with the game being in Orlando, a good chance for a lot of Gators to come see Florida against Michigan State in the Citrus Bowl. Yeah, and we need that to happen, Steve. Obviously, you know, we're trying to bounce back. And, you know, our Gator fans, we've always said, are second to none. And we certainly need a great presence in, um, in the Citrus Bowl. So we hope our fans will, will be there and, and be pulling the Gators towards what will is the start of a new decade. And that's the way we needed to look at it. The 1990s were very good to the Gator football program. And Citrus Bowl is the start of a new decade. And let's, let's all be there in force because we'll need that type of crowd. Right now, as uh, we have talked about basketball and we're coming to the end of a football season and a volleyball season, looking ahead to some of the spring sports, and again, with the great coaches we have, I know you look ahead to tennis and baseball and, and softball on the tracks. So a lot of exciting times ahead in the year 2000 for Florida Athletics. Yeah, exactly right. you got to be careful. If you start naming coaches, you forget one. We have a lot of great teams, a lot of great coaches that are um, getting their competition, and we would always look forward to the entire year. We've had a great fall, and now we look forward to the spring because I think there's a lot of excitement ahead for Gator fans everywhere. Jeremy, when you look back in the 1990s, the University of Florida Athletics, you've got to be very proud of what's been accomplished. Uh, the vision for the year 2000 and on. Well, you know, we've always said that we, at the University of Florida, if we work hard and do the right things, we have a lot of resources, and we should have a chance to be successful. So the decade of the 90s were good to us. We won, um, I think, more Southeastern Conference championships than any other team in the league. We won a number of national championships, and so it was a good decade. But in the world of sports, you know, they don't look behind, they look ahead. And so we're looking forward to some great things in the, in the decade, next decades to come. All right, Jeremy, thanks very much. We look ahead to game three and see if Mary Wise and the team can get it going. Uh, she's been here before, and I think it'll be a lot of fun here. This, this thing's a long way from being over, in my opinion. All right, thanks very much, Jeremy Thank Foley, you, Florida Athletic Director. We'll be back with game three. Right now it's Pacific, two games to none, and we'll be back with the start of game three after this timeout, right here on Sunshine. Hey there, time for a holiday. So switch off your computers and take a national holiday with National Car Rental. Spend some time with National Heroes. Or visit a national treasure. Join the National Football League. Or take your kids to a national park. But wherever you go, National will get you there fast. Because with hundreds of locations nationwide, it's hard to find a place that's not a national city. Whoa! National Car Rental, what are you waiting for? Let's go! Hey, mister? What? You want my checker double-decker? Give me that. See you around. It's the new 99 cent checker double-decker, piled high with more than a quarter pound of beef. Boom, right there. I did. Catch. Now during our NFL Alumni Super Bowl weekend sweepstakes, you could win a free trip to this year's ultimate game. And welcome back to the Alex G. Spano Center here on the campus of the University of the Pacific, where right now the Tigers have the Gators two games to none in this NCAA East Regional Final Championship match. I'm Steve Babbitt, along with Heather Cox. Uh, we promised exciting volleyball, and we definitely had that in Game 2. Pacific had a uh, better way of it in Game 1, 15-8, but in Game 2 at 16-14, classic battle. Florida that close, but Pacific had one more shot. A seesaw battle, but don't expect the Gators to go down easily. They will continue to fight. I wouldn't be surprised if this went four or five. The Gators are playing excellent volleyball. Their strategy, their scouting report is perfect. They just haven't been able to execute as well, haven't had the ball control that they've needed or the blocking game that they've needed to win those first two games. We'll take a look at some of the numbers right now. The hitting percentage will tell some of the story because right now it's in the favor of the Tigers. And that shows with the amount of kills that they've had. UOP, because of their defense, just taking a few more swings at the ball. Also, I think the Gators giving UOP way too many free ball opportunities. Even on tight, chaotic plays, Florida has to make it a little bit more difficult for Pacific to run their offense. Florida's game, the serving game, like last night, has been very effective so far. Florida being led in kills right now by Jenny Manns with 10. But Pacific has three players in double figures. Stegman with 17, leads everybody. Jenica Smith with 11, Tracy Chambers with 10. So Stegman really has come to play and has played big tonight. And she's getting the support. That's a huge bonus. Everybody in the nation knows that Stegman's going to get her kills, but the plus for Pacific has been the play of Jenica Smith, Tracy Chambers, and Jamie Hamm. They've all stepped up, made it tough for Florida to really commit block or matchup block on any one person. And so far, Florida's strategy of mixing up the defense against Elsa hasn't really worked. 
All right, Florida sends out their lineup of Jen Sanchez, Nicole McRae, Jerilyn Hattendorf, Jenny Manns, Chris Boba, and Jen Whitehead. So far, Florida's middles have been very effective, right hitting about 39% with nine kills. McRae with nine. The one surprise, and I think somebody that needs to step up a little bit more, is Jenny Whitehead. She's taken a lot of swings, just nine kills, excuse me, six kills, and hitting just 100%. She needs to sit, hit, as I said, in the threes. Whitehead will serve here, game three for Florida. A Florida chance to score. McRae, quick hit, count it. Nicole McRae puts Florida on top, 1-0. When you have served to begin a game, if you can start off with a couple points, momentum obviously goes in your way. Absolutely huge if you can serve tough, and that in turn helps your blocking game. You start to score quick points off of your block. Stegman, touch up front, good in the back by Boba. On the attack, Mans, she's covered in the back by Pacific's defense. Mans, I set that pro attack. Miss hit by Jen Whitehead. Well, she's had a tough night. Miss hit right there. Well, in talking to John Dunning, he said Whitehead is not a bad set hitter, if that makes any sense, meaning that she's very successful on the good sets, but on the off plays when she's forced to do things that she doesn't want to do, she's not as good. Mans with the big hit, but the big dig in the back row by Pacific. Bubba will just send it over. Florida will miscue on the offense. Stegman. No miscue there. We're tied 1-1 here in game three. What an amazing week Elsa Stegman's having. 46 kills against Michigan a week ago. That same night proposed to by her fiancé, then boyfriend, now fiancé, Todd Binder. So engaged to be married and sets an NCAA record all in the same week. Great recovery by Chris Bova. Whitehead will send him back. Again, Chris Bubba with another dig. Florida, though, offensively out of sync. Pacific on the attack. Stegman covered. Whitehead up front. Jen Sanchez, the McRae. That time they ran a play and they got some success out of it. That's what they need, a little bit more offensive punch. And what a great player to go to, McRae. We've talked about the fact she's a redshirt freshman, but has had a lot of international experience, played with the 98 U.S. Junior National Team. Because of that, she doesn't play like a rookie. McRae sits down, serving now for Florida, Nikki Hartley. Nine kills for McRae so far in this match. Florida serving, 1-1. Serve down the line, they say it's in. And it'll be sent out to Pacific. Mary Wise asking for just a side out. What I think UOP's done so successful is stop those first strike attacks by Florida, the quick side outs. They forced a longer transition game, and that's why UOP's excelled. Man's wide on the attack, so UOP is up now two to one here in game three. They lead in games, two games to none. Gormson on the serve for the Tigers. Jenny Manns on the tip shot, hit it wide. Well, a lot of uh, hitting airs by Florida really were down really going after the defense. Yeah, the unforced errors. You want to force Pacific to at least have to play some good defense against your attack. Like that. that Perfect time, example. That time Heather Wright, backslide, went through the block and split the back row defense. Well, Wright just has such a deceptive, quick arm swing. She's so explosive. I mean, you see Danny Shin doesn't even have a chance to put a block up. Man serving, 1-3. Big hit that time again by Danielle Shin. Side out Pacific. Now Pacific up 3-1. Now has Stegman serving in Florida. Cannot get caught against the run here by Stegman. Nice pass by Hattendorf. Hands on the back row attack. Thompson was there. Again, Jenny Mans. Count that one side out Florida. Such a great awareness by Mans, recognizing where she is on the court, staying behind that three-meter line as a back row player. She must attack behind it. She can land in front of it. She was very close, but knew exactly where she was. Smith on the dink over the double block. Sign out to Pacific. Take a look at that one again. Nice play. Gotta love this. Go up with one hand and just an easy tip. And you can see the defense. They've rotated digging the hard cross court or line shot, not the tip. 
That's a tough serve to make, and almost successful was Danielle Shin, but that one caught the net, so a service error. And that's something that John Dunning wanted to do, was serve short. He watched the tape of Illinois, the five-gamer against Florida, and he said Illinois didn't serve them once short. So what they want to do is serve short and take away the middle swing attack or the slide right that Wright likes to do. Good serve by Chris Boba. But on the attack, Smith, and Pacific will get the sign out again. Pacific will serve three to one. Jenica Smith and Jenny White had very similar attackers. Watch how quick Smith's arm swing is. She hits across her body, making it hard to block. McCray. The block was there. UOP recovers. Four runs a play again. Whitehead blocked out of bounds. Jen Whitehead with the kill. Only her seventh of the match. This is a player who had a career-high 28 kills against Illinois, has been averaging five kills per game in this tournament, and has just six in the whole match. Good cover there in the back row defense by Pacific on the attack is Ham. Got it in the back. Boy, Pacific, they have been able to just pick the right spot in the back row where they hit it. Well, Ham is going high hands almost every single time. If it's not a shot, she's going high hands. She hits it so high that it just goes off the fingertips of the block and goes to where the block is supposed to take away. That deep middle back is supposed to be taken away by the front court block. Ham again, the sophomore from Nebraska. Have 30 digs in the first round uh, or second round match against Michigan. Whitehead that wow. time got on top of that one, hit straight down. A beautiful set by Sanchez, just floated it right on top of the net. Whitehead at 6'4", the tallest Florida player, has the height to just hit right over and snap down through that block. Also Stegman blocked, McCray was there, Mans was there, Nicole McCray, the Texas redshirt freshman got it. And Mary Wise has said of McCray, she has the potential by the time she graduates to be the best blocker to ever wear a Gator uniform. You certainly saw it just then against Elsa. Sanchez with the cover, the back or the attack by Mans. Gormson tried to dump it over, Florida was there. Mans is blocked, McCray tips it. Mans will set high outside Hadnorf. There's a joust at the net, another joust at the net. Florida will send it back over. Gormson bumps set. Smith, high set outside Stegman. Boba, another dig. Hadnorf blocks. Chambers blocked Hadnorf, one on one. Great rally, sign out Pacific. Well, we are being treated to some phenomenal volleyball. It is no surprise that these two teams are playing for a chance to go to the national championship match because they are two of the best. We have seen countless digs, great transition game. Hadnorf pass to Sanchez, not a good one. Back to Hadnorf, the dig by Pacific. Back set, Jenny Manns. The hammer gets that one through and sign out Florida. So fun to watch Jenny Manns. One of my favorite stories about her that Mary Wise tells is she went to go recruit her. Jenny has three brothers. She went to the home visit, Mary did, and saw a foosball game actually set up in the dining room. And at that point, Mary said she knew that she loved Jenny Manns' spirit. Very competitive family. Remind me not to challenge her in foosball. It's been a while since I've played. Blocked there by Florida. It was Manns. It was right. They covered well on the net. We're tied 3-3. Because of the tougher serving by Florida, the blocking game is a little bit more in sync. That time, Mans turns her right hand in again, doesn't get to it. Good dig by Hartley. Good save there by Handorf. Not much to do with that set. Statement dug by Handorf, and the ball will go out, though. Good communication. That's something I've been so impressed with Pacific all season long in watching their practices. The backcourt communicates so well with one another. You see a lot of support, a lot of communication. You can tell this is a group that's played together for quite some time. Thompson serves. Mans on the receive. And a miss hit by Mans. They got the touch, though. They wanted the touch. They got the call. And Mans is fired up. She pointed right at that line official and said, touch, and she got that call. Man serving now. Three threes are scored. Top spin serve. And that time, the hit by Danielle Shin. 
nice to see Danny Shin having a good match. Struggled throughout the last week. Went and talked to John Dunning. And actually got a very motivational letter from a former Alama setter that I played with named Melanie Beckenhauer. And it really helped inspire her, understand what her role is. And she's just come out to play tonight. Good pass by Mans. The backslide. Heather Wright counted. And that was all set up by the pass from Mans. Jen Sanchez called Wright's number. And Heather delivered. It's no surprise that Heather Wright has led the nation this season in hitting efficiency, splits the block this time, goes sharp cross court, winning 454 on the year. Florida hit the net on the serve, unfortunately, uh, on a tough air, and they'll give the ball back to Pacific. Boy, you hate to see that. You're serving the ball, and you've got a, a net violation. Mans to Sanchez, Heather Wright, blocked. White had tipped it over. And the kill attempt, good by Pacific Point. They take the lead for three. Well, we are really seeing Elsa and Jenny Mans go toe to toe, head for head, kill for kill in this match. Both of them very effective tonight from the back row attack. Jenny Whitehead fights through it and gets the tip over. The outstretched defense by Pacific, sign out Florida. Pacific is up in games 2-9, so Florida fighting to stay alive in this match. There is no tomorrow for the Gators. Every point counts from here on out because they're down in games 2-zip. It's Bubba on the serve. Bubba, another dig. Back row attack, man's the tip. Counting. Chris Bulba has 17 digs right now. Her career high is 21 against Penn State. She may eclipse that today. So nice to see that she's feeling better. Had to exit a little bit in game two. Took a knee to the back and is back and making an impact. Big time hit there by Jenica Smith of Pacific. Sign out to the Tigers. Let's take a look again. Once again, a lot like Jenny Whitehead swing sharp cross court, cross her body, hits seam that time a field goal right through the forearms of Nikki McRae. Miller will serve for Pacific. And again, Florida will not have a chance to run the offense. Chambers hits. Net violation on Florida. Point Pacific. 5-4, the lead for the Tigers. And that point started behind the tough serve of Courtney Miller. She's really gunning it into that deep area one, deep to Chris Bova. Good pass that time. Oh, what a tip by McCray. Did she read the defense blow? And that's the scouting report. That's all about Nick Sharona, Stacey Wolf, and, and Mary Wise staying up till one in the morning watching tape and knowing that that area is open. When they commit on her and Ham comes in to help block, that left front area is wide open. Down by one, Florida will serve here, serving Jen Sanchez. Good pass by Ham. Bubba sends it up high. Oh, the play at the net. Was it Clemson again, the center? Smallest player on the floor. And it's been such a steady force on their right side. Some great defense out of Kara tonight. Fun to see her playing in a UOP jersey. It was actually a ball girl here when I played. Right hand on the attack. A spinner off the uh, block. Pacific couldn't cover it, so sign out for Florida. Jenny Whitehead playing with two broken fingers all season long. You see them on her left hand. They're taped up, had pins put it in them. The beginning of the season was definitely hampered early. So far, tonight doesn't seem to be showing any ill effects. The back row tap dug by Boba again. Stegman, her hit, tipped at the net. Dig by Florida. And that's going to be four hits on the Gators. Side out Pacific. Very wise, encouraging her team to keep... Logging along, they're down two games, none. And the score here in game three, down 5-4. Short serve, picked up by McRae. High north, touch on the block. Stegman on the kill, and boy, when Pacific comes up with the play, they come up with the right play, huh? Once again, it's all about transition volleyball. You can see what versatile, skilled players these are, because even in chaos, Pacific makes it look simple in transition. Nicole McRae, the redshirt freshman, has had a good night attacking the ball. Kill number 13 for McRae. It's good to see both middles be so effective 
McCray and Heather Wright both had shoulder surgery during the offseason. Both were not 100% to start the season, but both certainly playing effectively. McCray with those 13 kills, Wright with 11. Nikki Hartley comes in to serve. Oh, big hit by Danielle Shin. Sign out Pacific. Pacific has answered every time Florida's tried to get something going. Pacific has made the play. Danny, a middle blocker in high school, came in and started right side this season, but she's much more natural, more fluid in that middle blocker position, which is unusual because she's kind of an atypical middle blocker. Quick play, had the right, but the block is there. The dig sent back over by Elsa Stegman and Pacific now has a lead of 7-4. to four. And Mary Wise says we need a timeout on the Florida bench. Let's take a look again. Jen Sanchez doesn't have anything she can do with it. As a back row player, all she can hope to do is deflect the kill by Stegman. Pacific leads in games to none. They have a 7-4 lead here in game three. Back with more action from Stockton, California after this. Hi, I'm Lee Corso. I invite you to join me at Central Florida's greatest high school event ever. Some of Central Florida's best high school athletes will hit the gridiron in Dixon Ticonderoga's All-Star High School Classic on Saturday, December 11th at Showalter Field. Join me, celebrity coaches, championship cheerleaders, and high school seniors for a big night of football when East meets West in Central Florida. The admission is free, and this game's benefits go to Special Olympics Florida. Be there! The University of Florida campus is a beautiful place, but the challenge for a major university in the 21st century is to move beyond these walls and meet people where they are. That means using technology to assist our students with registration, improve the classroom learning environment, and even deliver courses to their workplace, no matter where that is. It's part of our commitment to performance in the new millennium. For all the latest on the Gators, check out the Gator Insider page at sunshinenetwork.com. And you can also do some Christmas shopping for all the sports fans on your list at the mall on sunshinenetwork.com, your web source for Florida sports. And the dig attempt, not there by Pacific. The kill for Florida by Wright, sign out Florida. I'm Steve Babbitt, along with Heather Cox. And welcome back to Sunshine Network's coverage of Florida Volleyball from Stockton, California. Served there by Jenny Mams. And a carry call against Florida, so sign out to Pacific. And right now it's crucial for Florida to get more of its offense involved. Gerilyn Hattendorf and Jenny Whitehead must be more of a factor in this third game to bring Florida back. Mans up front to Sanchez. Back row attack, Mans. Pacific now, they'll try their back row. Stegman. Back slide, Heather Wright. Good try by Rosenquist, but a big hit by Wright. Boy, Wright just hits with such a heavy shoulder. Combine that with how quick she is, and she basically beats the block on just about every attempt she makes. 13 kills for Wright. She's hitting 458 in the match. Smith pulls the block for Pacific. They'll get the side out. Smith, she's hitting 583 in the match. And Jenica Smith reminds me a lot of a former All-American player here at Pacific. Chrissy Pfeiffer hits very high, likes that second tempo ball. A short serve again. Mans a little pass to Sanchez. They run the quick middle. Whitehead is blocked. And Florida has trouble with the ball. 8-4 now Pacific here in game three. Very uncharacteristic lack of communication on the end of this play following the good cover. Ham with the roll shot. Mans with the dig. Right, pulls the block. Set out for Florida. Now Florida down 8-4, I would think. Could use a run of some points here, and we'll see what happens. And serving will be Heather Wright. Heather Wright stays into the ball game this time. Wise anticipating a long game, thinking that she'll need the substitution of Bova later in the game. There's Jenny White's good swing there, right down the line, point Florida. Now down by three, eight five. Heather Wright led the country in hitting efficiency at 451 and served that one in the net. That's a tough break right there. That's a momentum killer. 
See if Florida can recover, though, and get the ball back. Good touch there on the net by Pacific. They were in the same play. Oh, what a one-hand save there by Jim Manns. Hits it to the back row. Pacific runs the play. Stegman pushes it across. McCray on the back slide. Gets it by the back row defense of Jenica Smith. And Sanchez continuing to use the set behind her with both McCray and Wright. Pacific needs to adjust. Reed Sanchez, you see the arch in her back. They need to recognize she is setting that behind and get over there a little bit quicker. Whitehead gets it by the defense. Count it. And Florida on a little bit of a run. They have two points, two all run. Timeout by John Dunning. And Florida's down by two, eight to six. And Florida doing a nicer job these last few points, getting the first strike opportunity, getting a good look at their first offensive chance and not forcing this into a transition game. Florida to win has to be a great side out team and do it on their first attack. Game one went to Pacific, 15-8. A good game two battle, 16-14. The Tigers the winner. And now Florida trying to stay alive in this match. Again, the winner goes on to the final four out in Hawaii. Let's take a look at some of the hitting numbers. Florida, they started well in game one and in game two it went down, but they're back up in game three. Very interesting to see both teams sort of mimicking each other. The second game was all about defense, forcing each team into a very low hitting percentage. This game is all about offense, a lot of first strike opportunities, not as much blocking, so a higher hitting efficiency. Now on the season, Florida was hitting at 309 coming into the match as a team, and Pacific came in at 303, so Pacific right now more near that number. Right, right now Florida needs to work on that offensive efficiency a little bit more, and when they don't have a good look at the ball, they need to keep the ball away from the left sides of the court. That is where Pacific's best defenders play, and Jamie Hamm and Elsa Stegman. So if you're thinking about where to go if you're a Gator, go to middle back or right back. Jen Sanchez will have the serve. We'll see where Nick Sharonis signals for the serve location. And the serve went middle. A little tip shot easy there by Chambers. Nobody home to cover. And sign out for Pacific. So Pacific with an 8-6 lead will have the serve. Mary Wise continuing to fiddle, moving Whitehead to the right side of the court after she was just on the left. Carry on Whitehead, point for Pacific, now at 9-6. Critical juncture of the match for Florida, they need a side out. Once again, moving the adjustment now, Whitehead coming up, right passing. Paul McRae on the back slide, comes through again. McRae, with 15 kills, leads Florida in that department. And that's hard to believe when you look at players like Whitehead and Manns, you thought they would be the go-to players, but good balance, four players for Florida in double-digit kills. Chambers again on the cross-court kill. Side out Pacific, Chambers will be serving 9-6. Can't say enough about Tracy Chambers. She doesn't get a lot of publicity because she's just steady Eddie. She's always consistent out there. At North with the pass. Back to Hadnor, tools to block. Jen Sanchez says, let's go back your way, and the high hit by Hadnor. Hadnor last year played with a partially torn rotator cuff in her shoulder. She's been much more effective offensively this year. She had that shoulder scoped as 100% and has just done a nice job maintaining that 0-2 position. Nikki Hartley will serve. Down by three, Florida losing right now 9-6. Time hit by Elsa Stegman, All-American candidate, She's player of the year in the Big West. Watch her approach. Watch both of her feet. She does a little bit of a bunny hop. You don't see it there, but she goes off hard off of two legs. She tore her ACL two years ago. That's a new approach that she uses. Jen Sanchez had the set up there. Heather Wright came a little bit too early, I think, and no hit attempt. 10-6 now Pacific. Yeah, just a different play call. There's a quick slide and then a long slide. Right going in for the quick one, Sanchez setting the long one. Well, Pacific, there to 10 first here in game three. It's 10 6, UOP. Florida really now on the ropes. They're going to have to fight back, and they've got a long battle to climb because UOP has a two game lead. 
Yeah, a lot at stake right now. Florida has made three consecutive trips to the NCAA National Semis five times in the last seven years. One of only two schools, along with Stanford, to have been so successful in the 90s in their national championship appearances. And this is just unfamiliar territory for the Gators. Let's take a look at uh, Elsa Stegman again and a unique approach by Stegman. Watch both of her feet as she approaches the left side of the court. She goes outside. Now watch it. She's a huge bunny step, a jump stop literally, a lot like basketball, and then goes up hard. What John Dunning is trying to teach his players to avoid those ACL injuries is to not land on one foot and not go up off of one foot. Seems to be working 26 kills so far. Right now, Florida also trying to do battle against some past history because they have never beaten Pacific. They are 0-5 against UOP. And Mary Wise, she is 0-3, trying to find her uh, first win against the Tigers. And hoping that setter Jen Sanchez can find the right call. And they also got to find the right kind of block for Elsa Stegman. Tigers serving 10-6 here in game three. Heather Wright. The one step in front on that quick play right down the line gets the kill. Great adjustment by Florida that time. UOP served Manns very deep, taking her out of the offense. Manns had no offensive options. Wright was the only one to go to. Jenny Manns, top spin serve. Boy, Jenica Smith went right over the block, right between the defense. And so much more variety this year from Jenica Smith in years past as an outside hitter, only hit high fours. Now we're seeing her hit a little bit of everything. Elsa Stegman with that top spin jump serve in the net. Service air. Florida will get the sign out back again, serving 6-10. Here's Jeremy Hamburg. Ham with the roll shot. Florida could not get there in time and sign out for UOP. That left front area of the Gator court very vulnerable. The left front player moving way inside the court, leaving the sideline wide open. Not a good pass. Florida scrambles again. They've had a tough day getting the offense going because of the passing. We've got a net violation on Florida. Point Pacific. The Tigers are up 11 to 6. They're on a roll right now. Florida trying to get some inspiration from their coach they're gonna need it right now Jenny Manns to Sanchez Heather Wright blocks Sanchez recovers Handel sends it back over Ham dug by Handor Jenny Whitehead that time puts it down a beautiful set by Jen Sanchez just put it in the exact position Whitehead needed the tempo perfect Whitehead's timing and the execution watch the set Pushes it out, great follow through, such soft hands, and then just cranking hard cross court. But again, very similar swing attack like Jenica Smith. Chris Bubba with the serve. Big time hit by Smith. Well, offensively, there's no question that in this match, Pacific has had better looks off of the serve. Well, they've had the ball control in the transition game to offer that. They've sided out well, as well as transitioned well, where Florida's been able to side out, but not score points in transition. Courtney Miller comes in to serve. Pat North with the pass. High set out to Whitehead. The tip at the net, the dig in the back row. Ham hits it. A whole shot right down the line. You couldn't put it anywhere better. 12-6 Pacific. And Jamie Ham has come away with some huge plays. Saved the match against Michigan when Michigan had three match points they were serving for. Ham was the one they get they went to. McCray, the tip. It's covered McCray, the battle of the net. Violation again on Florida. Who they get? Doesn't matter, the call's made, and it's 13-6 now Pacific. Courtney Miller, the sophomore from Thousand Oaks, California, serves 13-6. You can hear Gerald Handorf yell out, and the ball carried about two feet too long. Huge side out right now for Mary Weiss's squad. They must serve tough, create good blocking opportunities. The block there by Wright, but covered by Pacific. Ham hits it. It's out, so Florida has a point. Trying to make a run now. They're down. 13-7. Great rotation for Florida to score points. Whitehead, Manns, and McCray in the front court. 
Stegman off the block. Side out Pacific. Again, Pacific has not allowed Florida to make any runs. And a lot like Florida did to BYU last night, Pacific doing it to Florida, not allowing Florida to make two good plays in a row. McCray dug in the back row. Thompson sets Stegman. Tried to go left corner, missed it. Side out Florida. Out there are Chris Boba. She's got 19 digs so far tonight. Jenny Whitehead serves for Florida. Right down the middle. Hand with the pass. Back slide. Chambers. Falls in. Side out again. We're nearing the two-hour mark, and we're only in game three. It's amazing. That's side out volleyball for you. McCray does not pass it well. Out north, block, but the block goes out. UOP serving the ball short, time, trying to make McCray touch the ball, or at least take her out of her, her game and her approach pattern. Couple subs come in for Florida. Bobo will sit down. McCray will serve right in the front row now. Nicole McCray serving for Florida down by six. Stegman. She's had that going on for two days now. She did it against Northern Iowa. She's doing it against Florida. Stegman with 28 kills in the match. And the only thing you can try and do if you're a Florida block is move it inside, take away that sharp cross court, bait her to hitting line, because that has been unstoppable so far. Move it in. And the right, the quick hit. That's a go-to play for Florida. I asked Pacific, what do they call that slide right that they that Heather Wright hits? And they said, we just call it the Heather Wright hit. <laughs> She's patented it. Jenny Mann serving. Oh, what a serve. But Stegman got to it somehow. Florida will send it back over. Tough play for Rosenquist. Mann's up front. Jen Sanchez back slide. Heather Wright got the touch. Once again. Point Florida, timeout to, uh, for John Dunning. And when Florida's had the ball control to run the middle, they've been very effective. McCray with 15 kills, Wright with 17. I thought that would be sort of the X factor, the differentiator tonight. They just haven't been able to go to them as often as Pacific has. Heather Wright, middle blocker, two-time All-SEC. NCAA East Region All-Tournament team last year, and they're trying to Masters count numbers this year. Florida down two games done. They lost game one, 15-8. Lost game two, 16-14. And they're down by five right now. So important for them to, again, utilize the maturity, the confidence level that they have. They've been in this situation before, ironically, against Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, in this exact same regional final match, they were down two games to none with the exact same game scores against Wisconsin that they've had here tonight against Pacific. Florida bounced back, beat Wisconsin in five. So if you believe in superstitions and believe in those numbers, that's a, a good sign for Florida. Florida has a win streak right now, 29 matches. Last night, Northern Iowa came in undefeated, and that streak was stopped by Pacific. And right now, Pacific trying to end the Gator streak. But Heather Wright says, well, we're going to keep on swinging until it's over. 17 kills there for the junior. Jenny Manns will be serving for Florida. Needs to have some good rotation on that top spin serve. it off the front of the block, Kaloons into the zone there for Pacific, and it's a winner for Florida. Now Florida needs to serve the ball away from Jamie Hand, force Rosenquist or Stegman to pass the ball. Well, Stegman on the pass, and that one is in, but a net violation on Florida. Side out to Pacific, serving 13-8. Courtney Miller serving again. Oh, that's Danielle Shin. 
Had the right on the backside. Good dig by Bronson. Roll shot by him. Picked up by Florida. Had the right blocked. Point Pacific. They're one point away from the game. One point away from the match. One point away from the trip to the Final Four. Serving, Danielle Shin. Short serve. Sanchez. They have the right. Blocked up front. Pacific. Back row attack. Stegman. Touch counting. It's over. Pacific wins 15 to 8. Three games to none. They win this match. And the URP Tigers are going back to the Final Four. They've been there six other times. National champs in 85 and 86. Mary Wise knows what it's like to be there. And John Denning now will get a chance to go back. Two good friends congratulate one another. And John Denning, a very well-deserved congratulations. Going back to the National Championship since the first time since 1990. And talking to John throughout this season, he said we are putting URP Volleyball back won two titles in the late 80s, and they are back where they started. The Tigers celebrate. A this good game tonight. Truly. Yeah, she's happy. A tough night for Florida and the Gators. Mary Wise has made an amazing run. What tremendous volleyball in the 90s. A tradition that she has certainly started. She has brought SEC Volleyball and Florida Volleyball onto the map. And in the middle there is Elsa Stegman. She got the most outstanding player of the tournament, and with uh, good reason, she had 30 kills tonight. And led her team to the East Region Championship. We'll talk more about it. We'll be back to Stockton, California. The OP Tigers, the winner tonight, three games to none. Back after these messages on Sunshine. Your trip to the bank just got shorter. Your rate of return, higher and your financial goals closer. Because now you can earn more on your savings with Telebank. Call now to find out how you can earn hundreds more with money market accounts that have consistently paid double the national average and CDs with yields in the top 1% in the nation for the past 10 years. How can we pay such high rates? Instead of building costly branches, we do business online and over the phone. That keeps our overhead low, so we can pass the savings on to you. Telebank also provides personal customer service by phone seven days a week. And all of our accounts are FDIC insured. Call now for a free information kit or visit our website to see how much more you can earn with Telebank. We're so sure you'll like banking with us, we'll even give you a $50 bonus when you open an account by December 31st. Shouldn't you be earning more on your savings? Call Telebank today. Tonight here from Stockton, California, in the NCAA East Regional Final, Pacific a winner over Florida, three games to none, and they did it in fine fashion. They win 15-8, 16-14, and 15-8. And they'll go on to the Final Four in Hawaii, and they'll join Penn State, Long Beach State, Stanford, and make up a pretty potent Final Four. And uh, Heather, it was a great match tonight. Great execution by both squads. We knew coming in it would be a chess match. Great adjustments by both teams. Each one continued to change, and Pacific hitting 46% in Game 3 really sealed the deal. All right, Pacific the winner, 3-zip, and we'll be back for some final thoughts here from Stockton, California, after these messages on Sunshine Network. Hi, everybody. I'm Dan Deardor. Where would you go for a home equity loan? Let's ask. Well, banks have the best rates. But banks only lend money when you don't need it. Advana National Bank is different. They lend money to people when they need it. Right. With my credit? They made their first loans 45 years ago to teachers who had trouble borrowing. They helped out when others wouldn't. This is a bank, right? With customers who get the flexibility only a national bank can offer, right over the phone. Gotta move all your accounts there. Nope, just call Advana. One of their loan specialists will show you how to use the equity in your home to pay off all of your bills. Get one low monthly payment and save hundreds of dollars a month, plus a tax deduction. You'll wait for some board to approve. You'll get fast approval over the phone. And your money in about 10 days. You don't need to have money in the bank to get money from a bank. To get the loan you want, call Advanta at 1-800-398-6880. You'll see they're different. Hey, they don't keep banker's hours either. And welcome back, Steve Babick along with Heather Cox. And right now we'll take a look at some of the numbers. Florida 
played pretty well, but boy, the numbers, uh, the hitting percentage favors Pacific, and that's why they won three games to none. Pacific just much more consistent at the net offensively. Also took the Gators out of their offense with their defense. Pacific's block very effective. They commit block tonight. They took a lot of risks, and it certainly paid off for the Tigers. And the Tigers winning by scores of 15-8, 16-14, and 15-8. And uh, a tremendous effort by everybody, including the uh, member of the all-tournament team. And the top player was Elsa Stegman, a 30-kill night, and she was dominating at times. She was the go-to player. She is going to do everything that she can to get this team a national championship. They won in 85 and 86, and since Elsa was a freshman, she thought, I'm bringing tradition back to Tiger Volleyball, and that's exactly what she's done. And the folks here celebrate the victory. We'll take a look at uh, some of the other members of the NCAA All East Region team. And they include from Florida, Jenny Manns, Jen Sanchez, and from Pacific, Jamie Hamm, Tracy Chambers, and Jenica Smith. So uh, two teams, very good talent. But Pacific, uh, I thought the key tonight very much so was they got in their offense a whole lot uh, more efficiently than Florida. Florida scrambled a lot. And Pacific, uh, they took good advantage of those times to make a good attack. And that's why they won 3-0. Right. Pacific stopped Florida from all of its first strikes, really forced a lot more rallies. Florida gave Pacific way too many free ball opportunities or chances for Pacific's offense to really shine. All right. Uh, it was a lot of fun for here from uh, Stockton, California. I know you're going to get a chance to go to Hawaii and see that. So it's go see some great, great volleyball. Tournament. Definitely great volleyball. Four great teams here this week as well. BYU, Northern Iowa, also great performances. All right, Heather Cox, thanks very much. That's it here from Stockton, California. We're tonight. Pacific, a little bit better than Florida. Pacific, the winner of the East Regional Championship. Three games to none. They go on to the Final Four in Hawaii. For Heather Cox, I'm Steve Babbick. And for our entire Sunshine Network crew, good night from Stockton, California.